I am Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're in Minneapolis, the suburbs of in Minnesota. And I've got Randy Geyer, who's got a great 60s classic for you. Randy, what year make and model is this one? This is a 1960 Chevrolet Impala convertible. You're gonna like this one. And Randy, let's start with the shirt, which has got fins. Is there a backside to it? Of course there is. 1960 Impala, but let's talk about your champion shirt here. Well, so show me this one. I like the t-shirt for the car show, and then I made something a little more formal for the banquets and awards ceremony, which I'm <laughs> arrogant enough to believe that I'm gonna always win an award, and I need a nice shirt for the ceremony. Now what's interesting is it's black like the car, and it has the actual upholstery from the seats sewn wow. right into the shirt, as well as all the emblems of the, that symbolize the Impala. That's cool. The Impala and the Impala. Wow, that, this is see the USA in your Chevrolet. This is the car they think about when they look at that. The Chevrolet script just perfectly placed there. Your wonderful emblem. Notice no Chevy bow tie other than this little one here with a little wrinkle in it, so it looks like it's waving. You can always tell a big block 60 Chevy if it has the cross flags emblem in the grill. That, that indicates right? that it's a big block. I if did it was not a small that. block or a six cylinder, it would have the traditional Chevy uh, bow tie. No, not a bow tie, but they had. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a different emblem. <laughs> All right, it's a different one. Now this one's interesting because this was your first collector car and you shared as a small child, there was something about this car that made it special for you. What was that? What attracted me was that I call it a jet on the side. And then that vapor trail going down the side of the car. I was a little kid and I just thought, wow, that is really something. And those fins, I mean, it looked like the car is an airplane to me, or an <laughs> arrow or something. So and let me... Know, when I grow up, I'm going to get one of those. And you did. The man had the dream, and it I came to pass. I never really grew up, I just got larger. <laughs> <laughs> both of us. I'm a bigger size than I used to be. Yeah, both of us <laughs> never grew up, that's for sure. Check out the curved window, raked back. The wonderful hubcaps here and you can see on these hubcaps I mean you can put your hand behind there you can see my finger coming through both sides you know maybe I can do that for you and then as you look down the side of this car you've got your Chevy bow tie there on the mirror and that neat little curved piece there this nice hand grip so you don't scratch that black paint this cove that comes all the way down to the point of the fin, and then exactly what Randy fell in love with as a kid. There's your jet. Notice it attaches to the door as well. Your Impala and your jet stream that takes you to the back of the bat wing fins. Your dual antennas. This car is a little bit unusual, and I like to say it has all the gingerbread on it. It's got the dual antennas and the rocker moldings and the bumper guards front and back. It's got a padded dash, uh, all the things that, uh, you know, uh, it, it's rare to find one that has all that stuff on it. Let's grab the keys from the ignition if we can. We'll feature the trunk. We don't have any trunk and treats on this one. Notice it has. Now, did these bumperettes, if you will, come uh, with this car? Or was it's that, an option. It's an option. Okay. I mean, they actually look like bolt-ons, which is quite unique. And then there's that chrome piece along the bottom. That the rocker molding, yeah. The, the rocker molding. So you, you don't see it very often. Even how you've got the shape like that. At the original vinyl mat. You can see the inserts in here. Looks just great. And just as I close this a little bit, you can see that big wing there before it closes shut. 
You know, the interesting thing about this car is how many intricate pieces of chrome they continue to add. I mean, you have a piece of chrome here, 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 you know, or stainless based on where it's at. There's never too much, is there, Lou? No, this is great, yeah. Painted on, as we like to say. Now, so, another interesting thing about this is that you notice that the fins lay flat. They aren't up and down and they aren't highly angled. There's a reason for that in my mind, my twisted mind. Okay. This works good for mixing cocktails at a party <laughs> because you'll have your cooler and thing in the trunk and you can set up your cups and, and make drinks right here and they'll sit here very nicely. It provides a real good surface for doing that. Which is great. <laughs> We'd like to thank General Motors for thinking that through in the Chevrolet division specifically. That's fantastic. <laughs> They really put a lot, think about this door panel for a minute. There is a lot here. You have a shape here, then it's flat. Then you've got the um, hound's tooth color here, which we also saw in Randy's shirt. Now this white piece that comes up, this chrome, then this separate slots this way in the chrome along with that. And even the great detail there. And that's the door. Yet, you have the body by Fisher, and I could have just made this flat, but notice we've got different kind of styling here as well. Let me just show you the hound's tooth on the chair. Our back seat. We have our ashtray. There's another emblem there. With the speaker. Take a look at that instrumentation. We'll get a little closer. There's our horn. Park reverse neutral drive. As we sit in it, we've got Chevrolet. Pedals. Even this piece here, how it's really nicely Intricate. There's a little feel to it. it. Feels like there's little pinholes in it. You have your generator oil. We have our miles here. Randy, are we? Do you have any idea? Is it 129,000? You think? I would guess that it probably is. Yeah. And this motor has it been reworked or it's? Yeah, it has. Okay. I actually bought this car on eBay from a Chevy dealer in Chicago, Illinois. Is that right? Stasic Chevrolet, if you ever heard of him. I have heard of them. And he bought it at uh, the Jefferson uh, car swap me thing. And then he brought it to his shop and he had his guys work on it in their spare time and the shop was slow doing the body work and the engine and all that kind of thing. It just looks great. And there's that door on the other side. Just fantastic. You have a little word day right there if I zoom in. Like I say, the padded dash is unusual. You don't see that very often in 16 pallets. Yeah, no, now that you say that, I'm glad you brought that to my attention. And it's so smooth too, right? Yeah, it's in great shape. Yeah. Great shape. Let me see if I can get that day listed properly. See if it'll zoom in on that. Yeah, it's getting a little blurry. Okay. Let's uh, take a look under the hood, shall we? Who wants to pop that open? Thanks, Mike. So as we look under here, the 348, and that's the big motor for this one. That is, yep. Yeah. That was as big as they came. That uh, The 409 was created the next year in 1961. In the 409 it was just the 348 bored out and the only way you can really tell the difference is the dipstick is on this side on the 348 and it's on that side on the 409. Is that right? Yeah. They both still have those big heads. Yeah, W heads they call them. Yeah. Now I'll feature those. There's that W shape as you can see. Actually looks kind of like an M right now from that angle or that angle. I think we've got our plate up here. I think I see it. Right there is our plate. 
Well, let's, uh, let's fire this one up, shall we? Is there, our steering there. A lot of Impalas, it's a, a round motor in there, and then there'd be a, uh, uh, what do you call it, to put the washer fluid in, a, a washer bottle. And there is no washer bottle because it doesn't have the spray jets because it's just single speed. Yeah. A lot of them that had the bottle was literally a bottle yeah. on the Chevrolet's washer fluid in it. Right, Nick, let's have you give it a rev. Wait, wait, let's, uh, let's step on the brakes first. See, we've got dual exhaust here. Hey, Lou, I don't see why we wouldn't. Let's go. So here we are in the 1960 Chevrolet Impala convertible with the 348, and the sounds from this car are just mellowing. They're low and guttural. <laughs> <laughs> it really has a unique rumble that's really enduring. This is the kind of car you get in when you've had a hard day and you just want to smile and chill. It is. It's a nice cruiser. Uh, sitting in the front seat is like sitting on your couch. Yeah. And uh, and you have this scenery that keeps changing before your eyes. Yeah. Let's let's it's show not that. Bad. Not too shabby. Look at how smooth. It's early June here in Minnesota, so all the grass is green. The trees are lush. We've had rain and we've had sun and everything is growing in green. It looks great. <laughs> so tell me, when you started looking for your dream car as a young man and got old enough to say, okay, I'm going to get one myself, one of those 60 Impalas with the jet on the side of it, what was, uh, what was your thought when you finally saw this one? Well, I only had uh, just a few things on my checklist that had to be checked off. First of all, it had to be a convertible had to be black, had to have a black and white interior, had to have an automatic transmission, <laughs> but other than that, anything will do. <laughs> no. Piece of cake. Sure enough, I found it, like I said, in Chicago, and uh, I just went and bought it, and I'm very happy that I did. I've owned it now for, well, uh, I guess about, about 14 years or so? 14, 15 yeah. years, something like that, yeah. And this it's always been a good car. And, this was, and this probably gave you a good taste for starting to get into the collector hobby. Yeah, it did, yeah. I realized this is where the fun is at. Big car, cruise, uh, yeah. You had muscle cars before this. I did have muscle cars. I I don't know, I wasn't a big fan. They're hot and it's too hard to do all that shifting. And <laughs> I wanted something I could relax and just enjoy just the ride. Just chill. Yeah. Just chill. Let me give some people some of the ride that were enjoying here as we do a little bit of the twisties. Nice and cozy. 
we shared, you know, you can probably hear this, especially as we come off a stop sign, but the, um, the 348 was the big motor at the time. Yeah, it was. I mean, that was the, the one that turned into the 409, I believe. I That's correct. That, yeah, the next year it became the 409. People who were on the channel could tell me if there was still a 348 and 61. Maybe there was. Uh, there was, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, along with the 409, yeah. Okay, so they had those. Four people on the channel could be Randy, anybody who has the answer. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> what a, I mean, when you're at a car show, I mean, this does speak Americana. It this, does, this yeah. is This is the car that, when you think of Chevrolet, Apple Pie, you think of a car just like this. I think of Dinah USA. Shore singing, see the USA in your Chevrolet. It, this is the car, right. And this is just a great one. Just cruising in the neighborhood. Well, we're gonna keep cruising this one just a bit more. But Randy, always a treat. So much fun to hang out with you as usual in your great cars. This is just a fantastic one. One of my tops that you have. Thanks so much for being on my car store. Thank you, Lou. My pleasure.